we have some time for taking uh, general questions or feedback from the centers. Uh, there would be uh, a detailed feedback uh, form that is given to you. One thing I'd like you all to know is that uh, this whole activity is being funded by the government and the government has given something close to uh, 3 lakh rupees per center to equip the center with all this uh, infrastructure that you see. So there might be some centers who have not yet been able to uh, uh, get the fund or even after got the fund they might not have been able to procure the equipment. So in some centers you might not see a good quality but very soon you will see. In spite of that I think there are some centers which have not been able to keep up with the standards and that's why you have seen poor quality. While we thank them from our side I would also request you to talk to the center coordinator, the workshop coordinator to see that the centers uh, make sure that the facilities are up to the mark and we are always available here. Uh, to help you set up the centers if there are any technical infrastructure issues. So with that I will take questions now. So KCE Society from Jalgaon. Hello sir. Uh, sir I just want to share my experience regarding teaching. I am in this field since past three years and uh, I have seen diversity in students. I have seen diversity in teachers and I have seen diversity in thinking of teachers. Well uh, what my experience is I try to correlate what my students give my feedback to me so that next time when I go in the class and therefore teaching to them, I get more, uh, I, I just solve my problems, what they have told to me and I, to de de and I try to deliver in a more successful pattern. And sir, I just want to say one thing, this course will help not only me but everyone as a teacher to improve their teaching skills, to improve their research methodologies and sharing ideas. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. I hope our intention was exactly that, that you could use this course material for your own research, for getting your uh, masters and PhD students on board, doing their research and also initiate undergraduate students. It might, not all the topics might be useful for undergraduate students. But if you can uh, initiate at least a few people who are interested in higher studies, uh, if you can initiate them into what is actually expected of a very good uh, uh, independent contribution, it need not be research. Many of those things that we discussed, it need not be a full time research, but anybody who wants to work independently in a science and technology field would need to know what is done by professionals. So I think it's very important that we inculcate even the undergraduate students into all these things. Definitely postgraduates and other faculty who are doing PhD will find it uh, useful. Thank you very much. One more thing I would like to ask. So the upcoming course on pedagogy, is it online or uh, is it, it, it will be in this mode also? I mean the workshop mode? Yeah, I have uh, uh, my team from uh, the workshop who will uh, take this question. So you can ask questions like this as well. So this is Mahendra from the workshop Hello. team. Yeah, this pedagogic course will be online course only and it will be done in IIT Bombay platform. Will there be and opportunity to interact? Actually, there will be no interaction as such. All the uh, course related things, it will be done online in online mode. Thank you, sir. And sir, uh, is it free of cost or is, is it, do you have some charges related to it? There is no charge because there is no remote center involved here. There is no uh, infrastructure uh, requirement. Since it is online in online mode, you have to, like uh, anybody and everybody can participate in this pedagogy workshop. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. Next is D.Y. Patel from Pimpri Pune. Do you have some questions or comments, please? Yes, sir. Just one question from our side. And I think this is the query with all of us. The workshop actually was very useful for all the participants. As all of us are aware, that the communication skill is very important for everybody. Just one question, a major question from our side. Can something be done to give a proper weightage to communication skills in the curriculum for the students? So this question was asked even earlier, but I'll reiterate uh, what was said then and I'm going to say that again. Now, AICTE has in its model syllabus two communication skill course. Both are not credited courses, but it, it carries some, it has to be uh, done. So one is I think uh, technical communication, other is some soft skills or something like that. There are two 
courses that is already part of undergraduate model curriculum from AICT. Independent universities might choose to have their own curriculum, so uh, we can't really influence that. Even in IIT Bombay, we have, at least for postgraduates, we have it compulsory. For undergraduates, there are uh, different other forms which are not compulsory. So I think it is very much within your domain. So AICT has done its best, but I think if uh, the, as teachers you can impress your principals or vice chancellor, I think it will be true. You can tell them the kind of material that is yes, available sir, to you now. But it has been introduced, but the weightage that is being given to it is something that is uh, creating a problem because the students are not realizing its importance. Yeah, I, I see that, but... And the, uh, the realization comes at the last when they appear for the interviews and they have to face the problem at the time of interviews. That's correct. So, I guess... Uh, uh, maybe if there is more awareness, like if we conduct, if we, if more teachers like you are uh, made aware that there is material now available that uh, people can use and uh, still make it, uh, pitch it at a high standard. I think it, it, uh, you can impress your uh, uh, administration to give more weightage. So we'll go to Charusat from Nadiad. Yes, please go ahead. Thanks very much for giving us an opportunity to attend such an uh, interesting and interacting uh, workshop. Uh, we would definitely pass on the benefit to our students. Uh, Thank regarding you. Thank the you very center, much. I would say that as you as you said, sir, the some improvement scope is uh, there, particularly related to our center. Throughout the entire week, we have missed the opportunity to interact with the coordinator of this course. You mean the infrastructure coordinator or the workshop coordinator? I mean the person who is in charge of the this program workshop. program coordinator, sir. He was having his busy schedule and uh, that's why he was not able to be available throughout uh, the week with us. Okay, okay. That's, that's why at several incidents when you instructed that coordinator will do this and that for you, he, he was not available with us. Okay. So that's an uh, um, important thing we'll take. Uh, feedback from you and we will try and see uh, uh, what best can be done from our side. Thank you very much for that feedback. Sona College of Technology from Salem. Good afternoon sir. Good afternoon. I would like to give feedback about this workshop on behalf of all our participants. Uh, it is very good and we learnt directly from you so much from the presenters. Indirectly also we learnt so much the patience you answer to our questions. It is very nice and one suggestion we have is that you could also conduct programs uh, for subject oriented like for textile uh, department uh, we do not have any programs and also I feel that for uh, technical English also you could uh, suggest some uh, programs so uh, we could attend all the quizzes online. It would also enhance our uh, uh, ability. Yeah, thank you for that feedback. So uh, we are only slowly scaling up to other departments. So we have uh, limited courses online. But you should definitely check out courses from international universities uh, which are available also free of cost where you might not get participation certificate like what you get here but you will that will certainly improve your learning. So please check out courses from Stanford, MIT which are available through platforms uh, called as Coursera, uh, edX and so on. So uh, that will also benefit you. Uh, you might find uh, technical English also there. We don't have uh, technical English even in IIT Bombay. Uh, we only have the uh, communication skills course, but uh, you should definitely check out other courses online. Thank you, sir. We'll be happy if you just carry on with that, sir. And we'll also check out for the websites, whatever you told us, sir. Thank you. Thank you. SIES Navi Mumbai. Good afternoon, sir. Yes, good afternoon. Uh, we are very much thankful for all the professors. We could learn many things just by observing you, the way you conducted various sessions, the way you motivated us to uh, complete our assignments, exercises, and we could learn many things just by complete itself. Uh, I have one question. Can a student enroll for your uh, courses online on IIT Bombay X as an individual candidate and how to go about it? Yeah, I'll have my team uh, answer that question. Actually, if you're talking about uh, uh, this technical communication workshop, right now it is not going on for the students. But uh, in future, we may plan for this technical communication workshop online, which will be available for students also. Right now, there are three courses uh, which we have just finished. That is uh, 
computer programming, engineering thermodynamics, and signals and systems, uh, wherein even students can participate in IIT Bombay's platform. Uh, sir, I have one more query. A student belong to a college who is not a part of this remote center. Can he enroll for the course? And what is what are the formalities he needs to complete? Okay, and let me repeat the answer that was given. There were courses that are available for anybody to join. So there were different modes that uh, this online course with that we are offering. One is only by invitation. Like all of you were considered as students by invitation, and only this lot of about 3,300 participants were allowed to view this course. That is one. In the second model, we have colleges which are running a particular course. So my colleague, uh, Professor Gaitonde, will tell you about more about that a uh, short while from now. So in that, there are colleges which are, so that is one mode which Professor Gaitonde will say. The third mode is completely open to uh, any student at uh, any point of time when the course is offered. So a similar model is followed for several courses from international universities as well that your student can just go and log in there. Anybody without payment of fees can listen to the lectures and get a minimal certificate. But if you want a complete authorized certificate, there are some charges. So I invite uh, Professor Gaithonde who has also been running uh, a course in uh, this mode and he will tell you more about it. Okay. Uh, I have been the guinea pig for teaching thermodynamics in different modes in this NMEICT program. Uh, just the way you have gone through this uh, teacher uh, training or uh, teach uh, 10,000 teacher T10KT program for technical communications, I have conducted two workshops, one under the Teach 1000 te Teachers program, which was the precursor of the T10KT. Uh, both were on engineering thermodynamics, also the names were slightly different. Those were essentially the way this course or this particular workshop has been conducted. That is, each participant here, number one, must be a teacher in some center. That center need not be a remote center. For example, in one place there could be five engineering colleges nearby. One of them could be the remote center, but teachers from the other engineering colleges or other colleges could come there and register through that remote center. But each and every participant, as Professor Sundar said, was uh, pre-registered and invited. The other mode is what is known as a MOOC, a massive open online course. And although Mahindra started off, uh, IIT Bombay has a you may call it a department or an entity within it, uh, which is known on the web as IIT Bombay X dot in. Cool. Part of this in course in that. So you know about it. And on that, if we offer this course, then that remains open to anybody. Anybody who can get access to IIT Bombay X dot in has an email address and can register on it. And that way, it will be a direct link between the teachers here and the student. But remember that IIT Bombay X type of MOOCs, uh, they are not live as this one is. They are all pre-recorded and they are put on the web according to a certain timetable. So it is not necessary for you to be present in this particular center, say from 9.30 to 4.30 every day. So once it is on the web, Somebody who is a night owl can study from 10.30 p.m. to maybe 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. if he or she so wishes. And somebody who wants to get up early can get up early at 4.30 a.m. and start studying from 5 a.m. to whatever time he or she pleases. The flexibility is compensated by the fact that, for example, here one of you could raise your hand, ask a question and we could uh, comment on your question or try to give a proper reply. There, there is only a discussion forum, like a, you know, moderate, not moderated, but online question answer session. So you ask a question on a particular topic. It's like a news group and uh, other participants could comment or try to reply to it. And the teachers could also uh, comment and try to reply to it. Uh, okay, uh, there are other uh, uh, facilities in the MOOC 
the evaluation is not yet very formalized. Okay, that is because although we have tests and examinations, these are not conducted in a formal environment. For example, when you conduct an examination for your students, you set up a timetable, which is a very strict timetable. Say, a thermodynamics paper could be from say 9:30 to 12:30 on Monday, 3rd December or whatever is. And before 9.30, the student is expected to be in his or her assigned seat, will be given a question paper and a set of answer books. He or she should then write whatever they want to do and then hand in before 12.30. And all this thing happens in front of not just uh, you know, CCTV cameras, but in front of live invigilators. So, any mischief is immediately caught and hence nobody tries to play any tricks. Whereas when you have thousands of students sitting at their homes or their students or maybe even in a bus or a car looking at the thing at a laptop, it's not possible to do this type of an invigilation. So we expect some sort of an honorable behavior from the students because all the examinations are online and because not everybody can be online simultaneously, say between 9.30 and 12.30 on a given day, typically even a two hour or a three hour examination will be provided over a 24 hour or 48 hour period. So the evaluation is a bit weak. But those who clear the evaluation, we get some sort of a certificate. Now, how much weight a particular college or a university or any entity which looks at that certificate will provide to that, that is still a moot question. We are trying to have, uh, you know, proper invigilated examinations, but that's in the future. For that, colleges and universities have to come online and provide the facilities for conducting invigilated or proctored examinations. Once that happens, then we can give a proper letter grade like A, A plus or B, B minus, etc. for the performance in a, even a MOOC type of course. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. We'll move on to the next college, Tejpur University, Assam. Hello, we have not seen you before. How are you? Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Very good. Yeah, I'm Dr. Bala, the workshop coordinator. We met in uh, Mumbai, sir. Uh, sir, uh, we are having only eight participants, but these all eight participants are very sincere and regularly they have participated in the workshop. And one of the participants is just near to, uh, next to me, uh, Dr. Yasmin. She is going to tell about this workshop, sir. Thank you very much for your enthusiastic participation. Good afternoon, sir. Very good afternoon, madam. Please tell us what you have to tell. Yeah, we have thoroughly enjoyed your course. We understand that this, since it's your first uh, of a kind, uh, this program is one of a first of its kind. So we had some difficulty while we were trying to interact with you. But then um, we are happy with, with it, about it, because you provided us the material and then which we can use uh, as a future reference and then I give it to Dr. Manoj Hajarika who will give his feedback on this course. Good afternoon sir. Good afternoon Manoj, uh, how are you? Uh, sir, uh, we have found this course to be quite useful. In fact, uh, as far as my personal uh, liking is also concerned, that is technical communication, the concept of TQS and CRE, I have enjoyed thoroughly and I'd like to inform that actually one of my colleague, Dr. Uh, Badwaik, he has already passed that concept to our research scholars in a course on research methodology. So earlier also some of the courses uh, that was uh, attended by our colleagues, particularly the, that on pedagogy, methods of pedagogy in January. So some of the methods that were taught to or conveyed to us during that course is also being gradually implemented. So I am hopeful that whatever uh, we could learn or we could get our as a team will be in a position to implement in the semesters to come. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Nice to know that uh, you have been able to use that already in your uh, courses. 
Uh, we will move on to the next college, this is Mount Zion from Pudukotai. So we all like to give the standing ovation for the uh, presenters as well as the workshop team sir. So we are very much happy to uh, attend this workshop. This is one of the very very interactive workshop that we have attended previously. So thank you so much sir and it is very useful for the abstract writing. We will never forget your structure of abstract writing sir and also the questions so on. Thank you so much sir for uh, your uh, valuable session. Thank you sir and yeah. one more suggestion from Marie, one of the participants. Sir. Yeah, we would like to hear more of suggestions and feedback please. Thank you. Hello, good afternoon sir. Uh, as you told that uh, we are getting students from the schools, uh, my suggestion is, uh, is it is it possible for you to conduct similar programs in the school level? Because we are going to handle the school students only. After passing their school, they come to us. We have to train them in communication. So if it is possible, you can try. <laughs> okay, so uh, we will take it. So probably when we, uh, we are ready with such a course for our own students, maybe we can offer. So currently we are also pitching it only at the master's level. Uh, we are still haven't gone to the uh, bachelor's level, so yeah, that's a, a good feedback. We'll take it and we'll try to get some course for that. Thank you very much. Because if we do this, uh, surely we'll be achieving our uh, Dr. Abdul K. Kalam sir's uh, vision that is India 2020. If we okay. work towards it, surely we'll be achieving it, sir. All right, very good. And Thank you very much. And one more suggestion, sir. Yeah, please go ahead. Uh, sir, the technical communication aspect, if you have included the communication record for counseling the student and communication should be done for uh, the stakeholders, those aspects also would have been included. It will be more helpful because the students coming to the engineering colleges, they have many personal problems and they have many listening problems. So, if you will be putting some uh, case studies regarding the students' mentality, uh, so and so, and how to deal with the students, if those part also would have been included, it will be more useful for us. So, this is the one I would like to suggest to you, sir. Yeah, but I think then the, um, we will be uh, deviating a little too much from the main uh, theme. It gets little more into uh, psychology and so on. So, I guess it might be difficult within this framework and within the time that's available, I think we need to give uh, preference to uh, what is critical to technical communication. But thank you very much. Maybe some other course exclusively on um, student psychology and counseling might be good. Good evening, sir. Uh, it's one of a nice program in IIT Bombay that I never expect from this before entering the workshop. The relation between the technical English and the communication and the technical. So it is very good in the session. So all the sessions are very interesting. And I like that making the map tree, mind map, mind mapping. It's very useful to me. And uh, I just going to implement this in our uh, department papers also. So it is very helpful to me. I fulfill my requirement based on this workshop. So thank you to one and all. From the screen and behind the screen to all the persons, I thank him. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much for your very kind words and very nice to know that uh, you've already found something uh, uh, useful for your own work. So we'll go to IPS Academy from Indore. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. We can uh, hear you. First of all, word. my um, uh, gratitude from all of us for having such a fantastic program. It has been a great learning. Absolutely wonderful. Most of the aspects we were already uh, into it. I look after the training development, so GD interviews part were very much, uh, we were already into it, but there were different aspects that we found interesting and uh, I'm sure you're going to use these all, uh, if not all, most of them in our, our teachings going forward. One suggestion I have is there have been some technical problems sometimes, so if we can have uh, recorded sessions of all the speakers available on your site, anytime we need to uh, go back or refer to, we have an opportunity to do that. That is one. Let me just respond to it. So video lectures of IIT Bombay X that you saw already, first of all, they are hosted in YouTube and even now you can share those links with any of your students to actually view them. So it's all on YouTube. Secondly, 
since you already have an access to IIT Bombay X, anytime you can look at those lectures. And the last point is all these uh, sessions that has been happening over the last week, all of those are also being recorded and will also be made available to you to view it. So all of this is already there. Thank you very much. So that is actually that our requirement. So thank you because I know that IIT Bombay, whatever we have done previously, it is available. But I was not very sure about this for, uh, for 30th to 5th today, December, yes, whatever yes. we have gone through, if that is also made available. That's very so much. It's going to really help us. Secondly, I feel that if we can go to a next level, so you, we have a technical communication level one, and then you can raise the bar and go to a level two program. That would be also very interesting. So what would you like to cover in level two? So uh, more uh, detailed aspects. Uh, for example, when you go for, uh, I'm talking about my domain uh, subjects. So when you go for an interview or a GD, uh, you know, uh, uh, class or a program. So um, how can you, uh, you know, uh, prepare for the topics that are, uh, you know, particularly uh, pertaining to your own domain? For example, if a software company is coming for uh, your, you know, selecting uh, students, what are the likely topics and how you can, you know, research, prepare and go ahead. So if I, if you say the topics are divided into, say, um, domain specific, social or, you know, political, can we have some kind of uh, inputs regarding that? So a more detailing a more uh, micro level programs on this. Okay, so we have taken those uh, uh, points of feedback. Thank you very much. Thank you. I have my colleague would also like to add. We liked Mr. Viren Sethi's lectures very much. They were thought inspiring and these lectures told us how we can interview new techniques in our presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We'll convey to him. So, uh, one more thing that I would like to add that, uh, so these days our students are running uh, short of content or what we can say that uh, they do not have proper stuff to speak in GDs and all. So can IIT help in some way for this? Sorry, some kind of repeat? references or the probable study material that they should go through. So for what subject? I don't understand that. Uh, preparing for uh, campus recruitment specially. Oh, okay. Two specific uh, requirement. Maybe a few years from now, if there is something that comes up as a formal course, then maybe we can consider. Yeah. Thank you very much. So what we will do now is we are going to formally end this session now. And after that, we'll open the floor for discussions. And we will definitely take uh, questions as long as you want till evening. Uh, but we're going to formally end the session. And for that, I invite uh, Professor uh, Uday Gaitonde. So, uh, Professor Gaitonde is a faculty member, professor in mechanical engineering in IIT Bombay and he has been involved in online platform as he himself told in uh, Thermodynamics which he has been offering in uh, various modes. So, he is uh, among the uh, first few faculty who started out these experiments uh, with uh, online and he has also uh, of course, conducted workshops in the traditional mode uh, several years back, continuing education program and uh, he's got a vast experience in uh, teaching and uh, a lot of patience. And uh, if you think I have patience, he has got some uh, 100 times more than me. So uh, you should watch his lectures. So I invite Professor Gaitonde to uh, give the uh, final validatory address uh, for this workshop. So thank you, Professor Sundar, for inviting me here. One of my you know, weak points is my difficulty in saying no when somebody offers to do something and asks for my contribution. That is the way I have ended up conducting the first non-CS course under the you know, teach uh, 1,000 teachers or teach uh, 10,000 teachers. And hence, I conducted the MOOC on thermodynamics. And not only that, we have a, a similar program for all our MTech and PhD students in IIT Bombay, that is HS691. 
okay, communications or technical communication, the name may be slightly different. And because of this habit of mine, my department has assigned me off and on for doing that. So I generally know what is involved in this. And I find that uh, that's a very important course and I hope that our students and the participants here don't neglect uh, what is made available uh, for learning and hence implementation. And as I have grown and have become quite an old person now, I have to go through a large number of reports, thesis and even answer books. And one thing I notice is that the criticism and comments which I have to make, quite often a number of those, significant portion of those is because the uh, material is not communicated very properly. The latest example is last two days. I have spent evaluating a paper, three hour paper on, well, we call it Thermal Sciences 2. That is for PhD students who have been admitted to PhD about six months to a year ago and they have to write a what is known as a qualifying examination. They have been admitted but now they have to prove that they are good enough to be a PhD student. So all the maturity of an MTech student plus something more is expected particularly given a problem which is not a routine problem, sort of open ended and given something like 30 minutes or 45 minutes to work on it, assimilate that, understand what is asked for you, start going in the proper direction and communicate all your thoughts in a proper way over maybe 5 or 6 pages. That is what is expected and the paper consists of some 4 or 6 such questions. There is essentially no time limit. The paper which uh, I was evaluating, had a formal timing of three hours, but I know it went on for five hours. At the end of five hours, the last student handed in his answer book. I evaluated my part. Well, I was impressed if that is the proper word, but I am not very happy with that impression. Is that the students are unable to do well because they are not communicating their ideas and these are all technical ideas to the paper, which is the medium which will, uh, you know, take their thoughts to the examiner. They write something, but why have they written it? How have they come to that thought that is just not communicated? And hence, the numerical performance score is on the lower side. This is one specific example, but such a communication theme you will have to do whenever you write not only an examination paper, but an assignment or a project report or a thesis or even a formal paper for publication in a conference or submission to a journal. It is difficult to come up with an analogy for technical communication. You can't call it icing on the cake because communication involves content as well as the medium through which it is communicated. So the cake is also important out here. All I will say is as Professor Sundar had said, and as you have provided feedback in front of me in the last half an hour or so, you have enjoyed and you seem to be learning a lot from this course. So keep up that learning effort and all the proceedings of this workshop, including the question answer sessions, I think will be treated the way the earlier workshops were treated. That is, uh, the recordings are already being made and in a few weeks time they will be properly edited and will be put up on the NMEICT website. They will be available for you for watching, streaming or even downloading and it is open material so you can do whatever you feel like with it. So I am happy you have enjoyed this uh, six day workshop and uh, I presume that you will be using those communication skills after you have learned it. Thank you. So do you have any questions or comments for Professor Gaithonde? Otherwise, uh, we can formally uh, end this workshop and we'll still, as I said, we'll still keep the floor open for general discussions, uh, questions. If you had missed out opportunity to ask questions earlier, we're going to keep the floor open for some time. And if you have any questions prof only for Professor Gaithonde, we will uh, take it up now. Uh, Geetam University. Uh, sir, good evening, sir. Uh, this is Pawan Kumar from CSC Department, Geetam University, Hyderabad campus, sir. Yes, I have a small question regarding publishing paper, sir. 
sir, actually, uh, nowadays internet, international conferences are telling that uh, when if your paper is accepted, we'll uh, I mean we'll publish your paper as a special issue. Is it uh, equal to journal, sir? Depends on the uh, journal. Some journals take it as purely proceedings of a conference. Some journals actually do a complete normal peer review and then publish it. And if there are simply, if the conference is just bringing out a proceeding and even if they claim that is it is Scopus indexed and all those things, you need to be careful to the extent of which it was actually reviewed. If not a serious review, then it may not be uh, considered worthwhile to do that. Okay, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. And one of my colleagues also have some uh, feedback, sir. So I have a doubt regarding writing a chapter for a book. Uh, when you write a chapter for the book, can you use words like his, her, or do you normally expect it to be in a passive tense? Yeah, I am repeating the question for the benefit of others. Question is, if you are writing chapters for a book, can you use uh, his, her, or you need to use uh, only passive tense. So I, I think it is a matter of choice and discipline where what in what you are writing. In normal uh, uh, science and technology, there is hardly any person of personal reference to his, her, they and so on. I think your question was, should I use personal pronoun I, V or use it as a, a passive, correct? No, 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 I am not talking about an I and V, sir. Yeah. But suppose I am talking about Huygens principle. And I, so I give a uh, line about Huygens principle and I say he did this or do I have to use that statement also in a passive tense? Certainly should not use uh, gender because you do not know uh, the gender of the author, right? If you are referring to an article, you, def you cannot be certain of the gender of the author. So, uh, you must not assume that it is a male or a female. Uh, it is better if the uh, if it is a ch book chapter, you can uh, use the author year citation and you can just use that uh, they did this, which is fine. Or you say that, uh, uh, use the name and say uh, Mehra and uh, Ashok did this work, uh, which is okay, but I, you should not use gender because you are not sure of it. When you are talking about review articles, it is okay, sir. But when you are talking about like writing a very general chapter for a uh, engineering student, like suppose I am just uh, uh, remodeling some chapter for an engineering student and when I am writing it, that is when I had a problem when I was reading a chapter from one of my colleagues. I was not sure if I could, we could use the words like he and his. In a review article, Professor Gurajan was saying, we could use. Uh, when you are talking about the style for a chapter of a book, uh, actually the many such chapters will be collected and finally compiled and edited in a book form by the book editor or the series editor. It is the job of that editor or the editorial team to provide you the style manual to write your chapter. So you have to just follow that style manual. There is no general method by which we can say that this style is better for a chapter and that child, uh, style is better for that chapter. In fact, the job of an editor for uh, such a compiled book is precisely this, to see to it that uh, uh, we have uh, uh, all the chapters are essentially in the same style. Over. Yes, sir, and a last uh, comment from Alifash. We are very happy to attend this uh, workshop and we hope we are able to put into practice like especially the note making for giving it to students. Like uh, everyone wants notes from us more than looking at writing their own notes. So maybe I hope that I can put forward the way we have taught us this course no. so that it would be easier for the students. And once we have done something nice, I hope I will share it with you all also. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, this is Knowledge Institute from Salem. We are very happy to attend this uh, workshop actually for uh, these six days. And uh, there is a one question uh, to Professor Gaitunde sir. Actually, this uh, this was in uh, flipped classroom model. Uh, what we have uh, learned. How far uh, this uh, same flipped classroom model will be 
helpful to our students for the subject thermodynamics thermal engineering so i am i want to repeat that question for the benefit of others the question asked was the current model was a flipped classroom in which uh, you all did uh, online courses and then came here for interaction now this was for technical communication so how good is a flipped classroom model for more technical subjects and because professor gaitonde has taken uh, courses in thermodynamics so the question was for professor gaitonde uh, how good uh, if he has tried this model for thermodynamics and what is his opinion on that see uh, for teaching or implementing the teaching of a course there are a number of different styles which you have and these styles are not mutually exclusive for example for teaching a subject over a four month program it is possible that part of it is very traditional classroom teaching whereas part of it could be the flipped classroom or the blended model or hybrid model different words are used there is no formula which is ideal for a given particular imp given implementation of a given course a good model will depend on the number of students the type of students and their ability to adjust to different styles of teaching and the assistance that a teacher has for example if i am on my own with no assistance with about 50 60 students i will have one type of uh, interaction and one type of implementation whereas if i have say half a dozen teaching assistants and the same number of students i may use much of a blended or a flipped classrooms because in that case the uh, you know with a flipped classroom the routine reading happens before the lecture the lecture or the interaction personal interaction is much more interactive and if it is just one person with 60 students 1 to 60 is too odd a ratio to manage that but if i have 5 or 6 tas then the ratio roughly becomes 1 to 10 or 1 to 12 and it becomes much easier to handle a very interactive session over a 1 or 1 and 1/2 hour period so depending on the resources and the number of uh, assistants and students that a teacher has and the type of subject again the uh, model will have to be decided and of course the resources available okay. yes i have tried flip classroom for thermodynamics not when the class strength is 60 70 but i have tried when the class strength is about 12 15 uh, that happens because in iit bombay we have uh, the so called minor program and thermodynamics is one of the courses in the minor program and in the minor program we only have about 15 20 students in my thermodynamic class i did it once and then uh, for i think two times more professor bhandarkar took it two more years i don't know who is going to teach it next time but i think it will again be a small number and hence a flip classroom model over thank you sir thank you very much sir regarding this uh, course it was an excellent one this technical communication uh, we have to thank uh, professor sundar professor patsardi and then uh, professor seethi on uh, behalf of this uh, knowledge institute of technology we would like to thank all the organizers uh, iit bombay and then the team of professors who have uh, done this uh, course an excellent one and uh, as uh, we discussed uh, the uh, day before this will be uh, uh, beneficial to the researchers especially and uh, as uh, you explained uh, about this abstract writing and so thank you very much sir thank you once again thank you very much skc society college of engineering from jalgaon i just have one suggestion as we have done an activity on iit bombay x through video lectures and through assignments i just want to say that uh, it will be more easy for us to download the video lectures directly from the iit bombay x if it is possible instead of going on to youtube and then downloading it from there so please make the uh, availability of downloading the video lectures directly from iit bombay x as well as uh, downloading the slides so that it will be helpful for recall the material whenever we want uh, slides are already available in iit bombay x now making a video available is little difficult because of the huge files and normal servers cannot support that kind of bandwidth uh, it needs a huge scaling and that's why only servers like google can support 
So I thank Professor Gaitonde for uh, uh, taking some time of his uh, schedule to come and address you. Uh, if you have questions uh, regarding his course, he, his course was available online this uh, semester, which was done. I am not, not sure if some of you had uh, taken that uh, course for your own students. So every year once the course is run and where the students of your college can also enroll. So if you know people from uh, mechanical engineering or other engineering courses where they teach thermodynamics, uh, you can try this model. It may not be credited, it may not be used as a credit for your students, but you can try it out and let us know if it works and then uh, we can uh, uh, try for other courses as well. So we will take a few minutes break and uh, come back in a short while. Thank you very much.